Australia is not normally known as a place where we manufacture batteries or to be honest, anything else for that matter. However, we have a very interesting battery company here in Brisbane, which is in Queensland. If you've been to Australia, it's near the theme parks. And this company has revealed batteries with 540 watts per liter of energy density, which is incredible. These new batteries have a very interesting composition. I'm going to share what that is with you and how they're actually managing to get the energy density that they're getting out of these batteries, which if put in an EV, let's say you wanted to put in an average size battery pack, say a 77 kilowatt hour pack that you see in the Hyundai Ioniq 5. If it had this kind of energy density that these have, you'd get more than a thousand kilometers without needing to charge. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. I'm Sam Evans. I'm the Electric Viking. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. It's great to have you here. Lee S Energy's lithium sulfur cells achieved 540 watts per liter in energy density. Now, generally, when you talk about watts per liter, you don't say energy density, but that's what they've said. Now, for those of you, normally, uh, you would say 540 watts per kilo of energy density, but they're saying per liter. So that's a little bit confusing. Anyhow, Brisbane-based battery technology company Lee S Energy announced recently a development of its first 20 layer battery cells that are based on its third generation semi-solid state lithium sulfur technology. The new 20 layer cells use a low flammability electrolyte. Semi-solid means less likely to catch on fire, Fully solid, very unlikely. This is a battery component that moves charge carrying ions during charging and discharging. And it's safer than the traditional lithium sulfur and lithium ion cells that use a well, fairly flammable, actually no, very flammable electrolyte, said the company via a press release. Of course, lithium ion phosphate cells which I believe will be the likely battery chemistry of the future, are very good in terms of their safety, are very unlikely to catch fire. It's rare that those cells do. This is an alternative though to lithium ion phosphate cells with much higher energy density. To curb dendrites, which can be a problem in solid state and semi-solid state batteries, the metal filaments that can short out the battery cell and further improve safety Lee S Energy has used its patented Lee Nanomesh technology, wherein the cells use what the company calls boron nitride nanotubes. Lee S Energy's 20 layer battery cell has a volumetric energy density of 540 watts per liter, which is a 45% increase compared to its second generation cells. The cells also achieved a gravimetric energy density of 400 watt hours per kilogram. So that's the key figure here. Most batteries are currently at about comparable lithium ion technologies around about 230 to 250 watts per kilo. This is 400. Big difference. Volumetric energy density is the amount of energy contained within a given volume. While gravimetric energy density is the amount of energy stored per weight unit. To put that in perspective, CATL, the world's largest battery company in the world, manufacture a third generation cell to pack lithium ion phosphate battery cell, which is doped with manganese. It has an energy density of 290 watts per liter or 160 watts per kilo in its non-manganese doped form. However, its newest generation now has around 210 watts per kilo. So this has about twice the energy density of the newer versions of CATLs, basically the M3P batteries, which will go into new Tesla vehicles. But those batteries, of course, are much, much cheaper than these new semi-solid state batteries. That's the key here. And they're made on mass. How do you mass manufacture semi-solid state batteries from a small Australian company? Can you even do that? Is that going to work? I don't know. Now, if you want to compare them to CATL's other technology, which is not LFP based, you can look at their third generation nickel cobalt manganese cells. They have an energy density of 450 watts per liter which equates to 250 watts per kilo. So still obviously 
These new semi-solid state batteries from this Australian manufacturer have incredible energy density, which would really change the game for EVs. This is the point at which you can make aircraft feasible, as in, you know, commercial aircraft, 400 watts per kilo of energy density. So if they can actually commercialize this battery technology, it will definitely change the EV landscape. You can imagine you'll see cars getting around with, say, small battery packs like a 40 40 kilowatt hour battery pack and that'll be enough to give it a range of you know more than 600 kilometers considering this kind of energy density plus the other advantage is possibly fast charging tesla's 4680 cells for comparison available on the tesla model y all-wheel drive have an estimated energy density of between 272 to 296 watts per kilo however they have said that the cells they're going to be using in the Cybertruck have 10% more energy density than that. So they may have around 300 watts per kilo. We don't really know yet until Sandy Munro tears one of those down. We won't have any idea yet what's really in the Cybertruck battery packs. In simple terms, the 20 layer cells have the same physical size as an existing lithium ion cell, but with half the weight. That's what the company says. Lee S Energy expects its new technology to be used in drones and aviation, but it hasn't said whether or not these batteries would go into electric cars. Maybe they're too expensive? I don't know. They haven't actually disclosed what the pricing would be. Either way, breakthroughs in battery technology are important. The entire world to go electric. This is how we change the planet. I mean, if you look at things like, say, a lawnmower, all right? An electric lawnmower, they used to be ridiculous, they used to be rubbish. But because of these changes, these improvements in electric motor technology and in battery technology, now an electric lawnmower is just far superior to a gasoline-powered lawnmower. If you don't believe me, well, have a look at the power. A good electric cordless, completely cordless lawnmower has twice the power of the most powerful gasoline or petrol-powered lawnmowers. They're far, far better. Things have changed very, very quickly. This technology really possibly could go into something like more expensive electric cars or niche cars, even supercars possibly, drones, and many, many other applications. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.